Let's translate Romans 3.23. Pantas gar i marton ke isterunte tis doxis tu theu. For all sinned and fall, fall short of the glory of God. For all sinned and short of glory of God. All right, so for all sinned and fall, fall short of the glory of God. What does this mean? Many translations say for all have sinned. Have sinned in English is more of like a perfect tense. It happened in the past and it continues into today. This is not that. This is aorist. So if we look here, imarton, that's from amartano. It's third person plural, aorist, active, indicative. So it's past tense, simple past tense. It happened in the past. Is that a gnomic aorist where it's timeless? It's just a general fact. Tra Translate it as a simple present. Or is it a constative aorist where it's a summary of all people in all time taken as a whole? It simply just stresses the fact of occurrence. That's what it is here. It's the argument that Paul's saying is, look, everyone sinned. Now, from a translational standpoint, you might just translate this as the present tense, just like we have in Isterunte. Isterunte is present tense, third person plural, present middle, or passive, depending on how you want to look at it. So everybody sins and falls short of the glory of God. What is everybody? Pasapan. You can find it here. It is a substantive. Pantes, all, everyone. So everybody, everyone sins. It's like in the in the show House. Everybody lies. Everybody sins and falls short of the glory of God. But the point is, on the sin side, it's in the past and it's constative. It's a summary for everybody. It stresses that it has happened. The damage is done. That's what Paul is saying. The damage is done. Everybody sin. What does it mean to sin? Amartano, to commit a sin, or rather to commit a wrong. It bears the sense of transgression. However, I'll point out, amartano is the verb used for when a person with a spear misses the mark. Okay, and so when you miss the mark, you err. So it's simply just an error. Everybody errs. Everybody misses the mark, and everybody falls short. Istereo. To experience deficiency in something, advantageous or desirable. To lack, be lacking, go without, come short of. And in this case, passive with genitive of thing. So this is actually passive, but in combination with Doxis. Doxis. The glory. The glory of who? The glory of God. So everybody experiences deficiency in God's glory. Very interesting. What in the world does that mean? The glory of the Old Testament is the glory of Yahweh. It's the Lord's active presence at creation. It's the Lord's active presence among the nations. It's the Lord's active presence among Israel. What it portrays is grandeur, power. It is what shows the Lord as creator. It is what shows the Lord as redeemer. So there's two things going on here. First, in creation, in its entirety, it shows God's glory. Creation in its entirety shows God's glory. 
So from a creational standpoint, the glory of God is creation. And the second thing is God's glory is revealed visibly in his people. That's Romans 9.23. What I find interesting is that in creation, Adam was the image of the glory of God. Then you can take it further. The woman was the image of the man. The image of the glory of the man. So what's further interesting here is that between points one and two, between creation and God's people, there's a link between the two. So follow me here. Just as man is the image of the glory of God, just as the woman is the image of the glory of man, the church, God's people, is the image of of the glory of Jesus. So between these two things, between creation and God's people, both in the Old Testament being uh, the the glory of, of God, the church becomes the fulfillment in Jesus of true Israel. And so tr- true Israel, the church, is the image of Jesus. Now, Between those two, Jesus and the church, note the correlation with sin. Sin enters through Adam, causing humans ultimately not to worship and glorify God. What happens then is there's an exchange. Humans exchange God's glory for false gods. As a result, humans forfeit their responsibility of being imagers, image bearers of God's glory. And so in Romans 3.23, everyone falls short of God's glory by sinning. That's what Romans 3.23 is all about. It's all about God's glory and humanity falling short of that glory in their responsibility to be an image of God's glory for all sinned and fall short of the glory of God. If you liked this translation and explanation, hit the like button. Let me know in the comments if you think the aorist of Imarton, of Amartano, should be translated more like a perfect, or as a gnomic aorist, or as a constative aorist. We'll see you next time.